we're going to get into some words and terms that we, we will be using through our next couple of videos. We're going to start with glucose. Glucose comes from carbohydrates. It provides the body with its primary source of energy. The body's digestive system breaks down carbohydrates, which are then turned into a chemical that the body can easily convert into energy. This functional form of energy then gets absorbed through the small intestines into the bloodstream. It is then carried throughout the body providing energy. Blood glucose levels is the amount of sugar present in the body. When glucose levels in the bloodstream aren't properly regulated, a person can develop a serious condition such as diabetes. Glycogen is a short-term energy source. It's found in the organs, liver, skeletal muscle. The liver breaks down glycogen into glucose. This helps maintain blood glucose levels. Glycogen in muscle cells is broken down into glucose in response to intense physical activity. Before you can actually access your fat stores, you need to first deplete your system of the glycogen, your short-term storage. Fat tissue is long-term energy storage. So think of the fat in your body that you no longer want. Think of it as energy that you have stored and you want to get rid of it. So we have to find ways to access that storage and use it. That's how we get rid of it. We'll talk about that later. Insulin is produced in the pancreas. It's released into the blood when the amount of glucose in the blood rises, which is bad if you take in too much glucose. If you have too much glucose, insulin comes out way too fast. Uh, the insulin causes cells in the liver, muscle, and fat tissue to take up glucose from the blood, storing it as glycogen in the muscles, liver, when the body has stored too much glycogen, it then stores glucose and fat tissue. So if your blood spikes, too much insulin gets released, all the energy that's in your blood gets sucked into your muscles and your fat. So you no longer have energy and all that, all that good energy that you had in your blood, all the insulin just made it turn into fat. This has a profound effect on metabolism, as we just spoke about. This stops the use of fat as energy source. When insulin is absent, glucose is not taken up by the body cells, and the body begins to use the fat as an energy source, which is what ideally we want. So we need to keep our insulin levels at a low. Cortisol is a hormone secreted by the adrenal glands. It regulates blood pressure, insulin release for blood sugar maintenance. It helps immune function and inflammatory response. In its normal function, cortisol helps us meet our daily stresses and challenges. It releases glycogen. It counteracts inflammation. For a short time, having cortisol elevated is very healthy for you. Over time, high levels of cortisol in your system has a damaging effect. It tears down muscle tissue and bone, leads to weight gain around the belly, decreases mental clarity, suppressed thyroid function, high blood pressure, contributes to digestive and metabolic issues. It also lowers immunity and inflammatory responses in the body. Too much of it is not good. A ketogenic state is when a body starts breaking down your own body fat to fuel the body's normal everyday functions. This is very important. Anybody who wants to lose fat wants to get into the state. And the only way to do that is to find out where your carb level is at. Whether it's 100 carbs per day or 200 carbs per day, you need to stay there to become in a ketogenic state that allows your body to use the fat as fuel and not what you're taking in as carbs.